Hi everyone, today I want to show you how you can bring more life into your 3D models. 3D models in general are digital objects which we create in 3D applications like Blender, but I want to show you that you can actually hand paint them if you want to. In my last video I've briefly talked about texturing and UV mapping in Blender and today's video will be a great exercise for what you have learned there. So we will create a UV layout, then print it out and colorize so you will have this kind of result. We will then bring it back to Blender, apply to the 3D model and see the result. So without further ado let's now jump into it. I'm gonna start with a clean Blender file and create a very simple chair model, which we will texture later. If you wanna uh, skip the modeling part of the video, just navigate to the comments section and there's a pinned comment with the video timeline. And if you're completely new to this channel and would like to learn a little bit more about Blender, uh, here is a Absolute Beginners YouTube playlist which I've prepared for people like you where I explain step by step all of the features of the Blender 2.80. I mean all of the features you need as a beginner. So now getting back to the modeling, as you can see, if you've been following my videos, I almost always start with a cube. So I'm creating this very simple legs here. I'm gonna delete this face as we won't need it. It won't be visible during the, once we textured the model because it's inside the seat. And already I could start creating the UV layout. So let me cut out this bottom part. I'm gonna create four seams here and I'm gonna create one seam here from the inside of the chair, so it's not that visible. Now with everything done, I'm gonna press L key, go to the top view, wireframe view, and just duplicate the leg. Let's maybe, yeah. Now I'm gonna press L again, Shift D, duplicate, and move them back here. Shift L to deselect and holding my control key, as you can see, to move uh, incrementally. So let's now just readjust the shape a little bit more. Yeah, I think it's good. I'm gonna copy this face, rotate it, and extrude upwards, just like that. So this is gonna be a backrest of our chair. Let's move it down, let's move it up like that. And yeah, it's very, very simplistic and basic, but we don't need anything more. To be honest, we are just practicing our UV mapping and texturing skills. Let's just make sure the proportions are more or less correct. So I think we could adjust the height a little bit more, maybe like this. Let's maybe move the legs a bit closer. And let's maybe enlarge the backrest a little bit more. So I'm gonna scale it within the y-axis. And yeah, that's about it as a 3D model. Let's now UV map it. So I'm gonna press L key with my mouse hovering over the seating element. And let's now think how we can unwrap it. I would just cut off the bottom part again as with the legs and I will just add four seams here. So we are cutting the element in these areas. We can actually already add a UV editor here and see what's happening with our model. So let's unhide everything. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna select those, those elements first, press U and unwrap. So you can see what's happening. Here we have an, yeah, an unwrapped mesh. We still need to deal with the backrest. Again, I'm gonna delete this face, which is not visible at all. Let's save some space here. 
and let's maybe add the seams this way this time. So we are going to have that part as a uniform surface, this plus that. Let's mark seam, select everything and press U. So yeah, this is more or less what we have. Let's unhide everything and you can see, I'm going to press uh, control and spacebar move here. We can see some of the UV elements are overlapping with the others. Uh, to fix that, well actually we, we might need to make all of the sizes uniform as well. So to do that we go to the UV settings here and we choose average island scale. Once we do that you can see the scale was readjusted and now everything matches the sizes of the 3D model. Now we can choose pack islands and once we do that Blender tries to uniformly pack everything within the layout even including the rotation of the elements. So you want to you might want to disable that. Uh, what we can also do is increasing the margin of which actually gives us the distance between the UV islands here. So this is recommended since we are gonna paint over that layout. Oops, that's a little bit too much. Um, yeah, and one more thing. Uh, we need to think a little bit strategically here. So for example, this UV island, uh, we won't see it much, right? If you're gonna look at the chair, this is more or less the perspective you're gonna take. You're not gonna look from the bottom part most of the time. So we can actually make this island smaller. I'm just pressing the S key and yeah, uh, assign more space of this layout to the parts which are actually visible. So right now with this island scaled down, let's pack the layouts, the UV islands again. So now we can see it's a little bit more efficient. We could still try rotating maybe those elements and placing one of them here, one of them here, but let's just keep it as it is for now. We are not doing a game art or anything super advanced. I just want to show you how to uh, paint your own textures. In order to export your UV layout, let's just go to the screen here once more hit UV and export UV layout. So you will see the name appearing up here. This is the object's name and the PNG file format, which I recommend using. Just export anywhere you want to. And what you need right now is a 2D editing software. So I'm gonna use Photoshop. I'm gonna press Ctrl N to create a new file. And since I'm using my standard printer, I'm gonna use the A4 format from the international paper, hit OK and now I can drag and drop my cube PNG file which was exported from Blender. So this is how it looks like. Let's just drag and drop it to the new file. We can close this one. I'm going to press Ctrl T to enlarge it just a little bit. And we need to keep in mind that our end texture will have to be cropped to the square like this. I'm not gonna do it now because I wanna print it out first. And you might ask why it's a square. Well, because you have unlimited number of rectangulars and a square is just a square. It's an A and A here size. So uh, of course you can use any textures in Blender but then your UV layout will get distorted. So I suggest sticking to squares. It's just easier this way. Um, now, in Photoshop, I would like to remove this grayish kind of color from my layout. So I'm going to double click on the layer here. And this is the window that will pop up. Here you can try moving those sliders. So once I do it, you can see the gray color is disappearing. If I press and hold Alt key, I can also move those handles around. So let's do it just like that. And yeah, that's basically it. Now you can save the file and print it out. So I'm gonna get back to you once it's all done. Once you got your stuff printed out, it should look uh, somewhat like this. So now I'm gonna try to colorize it. I will use just a single color watermarker. I hope that's the right word. 
and as you can see I'm just filling the layout with color so feel free using whatever you feel comfortable with uh, pencils paints whatever um, now I'm making the edges just a little bit darker so let's hope the model looks better and my final step was grabbing a pen and just redrawing the edges of the UV layout so perhaps we'll get this cartoony style of a model let's see so I'm done with my drawing and this is how it looks like now if you want to get it back to blender you can either scan it for the best possible quality but I'm personally just gonna make a photo of it and bring it back to Photoshop back to Photoshop I'm just gonna drag and drop the image I've made and boom this is our layout so as mentioned before I'm just gonna crop it by pressing the C key and holding the shift button so we have the square aspect ratio now I'm gonna get back to blender just for a second to see how the layout looks so we have the legs here same as in our picture perfect we can also adjust the colors just a little bit so I'm gonna maybe play around with the curves increase the contrast but yeah I think except other than that we are really good to go so let's flatten the image press ctrl s to save it and let's go back to blender before we map the uv layout with our texture let's first add a new material and assign it so i'm gonna press new here and i will also temporarily just go to the shader editor here press ctrl and spacebar and we can simply drag and drop our texture to this layout again so I'm doing it and plug in the color input to the base color so when we go back to the viewport nothing really changes I'm gonna press the Z key and switch to the look depth view so once we do that this is what's happening and the reason for that is we have our UV layout unmatched to the texture let's switch back to the UV editor here press tab to enter the edit mode and now you can see the mismatches we have so you might have noticed I didn't colorize these squares that much and one of the reasons was we can use them to actually match our UV layout so I'm gonna press the T key select the cursor and place it around this area now I'm gonna press G, move the entire layout somewhere here. I'm gonna press the dot key to switch the transformation, the pivot point, sorry, to the cursor. And now I'm gonna press S. So you can see we are now scaling the entire layout according to this point. And we can try to make it precisely while looking, looking around uh, the UV editor. We will have to hand adjust some of the UV islands because well when you make a picture there is some distortion happening and so on but let's now press ctrl spacebar again and see how the model looks already I think the result is pretty pretty good we don't actually have to readjust that much after a bit closer inspection of the model I must say it's actually pretty damn good uh, as for the default result you could obviously try to super perfectly match the legs let's say if you're aiming for the best quality but as a general idea uh, and concept I think this is a pretty good result so of course you could try playing around with the shaders right now just a little bit more let's maybe do this um, what you can do with the shaders well first off you can adjust the colors so let's choose the RGB curves here if we uh, play around with them you can see we can make the paper look of the model even more distinguishable uh, you can also change the individual color channels so let's say if we decrease or increase the reddish color the chair becomes yeah, more red well that wasn't quite obvious like right anyway uh, with the blue color yeah same we can make the yellowy tints stand out a little bit more you can also plug this in 
as a, well, let's say a bump maybe. Let's let's decrease the roughness, maybe maybe increase it. Um, the way I set up bump mapping usually is making the model quite dark and quite reflective. So let's do it. Pressing Shift A, going to the vector and the bump node. Let's connect the normals here. And let's just plug in the color as a height. So as default, this is what you will get. But let's decrease the distance to 0.1, just like that. And increase the decrease, sorry, the strength just a little bit more. We could actually use the curves here to increase the contrast of the map, and that will make the the dark lines to stand out just a little bit more. Let me show you what I mean by that. So, if I plug in the RGB curves, increase the values here, but decrease them at the bottom, you can see we have those lines much more visible. So if we also add the hue saturation node and completely desaturate the texture, this is an input for your bump. So let's just move things around a little bit more and let's now plug this color as a height. And let's disconnect this node so now you can see, yeah, the bump, especially here at the corners, at the edges of the object is much more visible. Let's increase the roughness to 0.75, so it's a nice matte object like that. And let's plug in the main color map again. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is more or less what I wanted to show you in this video. I really hope you're happy with the result and I really hope you're gonna try out to paint your own 3D models and share the results somewhere, I don't know, maybe in the comments, maybe just drop it around the social media with choco for hashtag, uh, whatever you actually want. But thanks for watching. So I really hope this video was informative and you learned something new today. If you liked the video, well, just consider leaving a like maybe and a comment. If you didn't like it, you can also comment and let me know what I can improve so the next video is better. Of course, you can also subscribe to the channel, uh, donate to Blender Foundation and visit the Choco4 store. But as for now, I'm out and see you in the next one. Bye bye.